Oh yeah, baby. Since I talked about the 1989 release of the TurboGrafx 16, I might as well talk about my experience in the 1990s. Oh yeah. Second year of the TurboGrafx 16 was pretty awesome for me because now that the whole experience of getting a new system is over, it's time to play those games. And yeah, 1990 was a pretty good year. I talked a little bit about Bonds Adventure last time. Yeah, look at those colorful graphics. And yeah, Bond became the new official mascot of the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, so why wasn't Bond packed in with this system here? Well, the problem is, yeah, NEC of Japan told NEC of America you have to sell so many systems, so you gotta sell these systems before you can redesign this and all that. So that's why you see a lot of these old TurboGrafx-16 boxes with like a different sticker on it saying like there'll be like a free bonk or free gains but it'll actually be the same bots <laughs> of the TurboGrafx-16 itself and its original release oh yeah let me show you some of the other games as well yeah okay there was Bonk's adventure it sort of ushered in a new era of you know bot design and here's the original and it features the more I don't know Boring four pictures here instead of you know three pictures and one awesome big picture. Yeah! <laughs> and Final Latch Win was a fun game for me. I know some people don't like it, they look as like an old driving game, but still it had a cool RPG feature. And there are good ones here too, like the awesome military madness. Oh yeah, I used to play this one all the time, and I still play it actually. Very fun military game. Okay, and there's some air ones here too. Yeah, Ordine, Utopia, Space Harrier, Taken to Hoop. Uh, <laughs> and we also got, yeah, Deep Blue, JG and Jeff. Yeah! <laughs> and the Amazing Ease Book 1 and 2. And of course, we can't forget about the awesomeness that is Flatterhouse. <laughs> yeah, it really made the original Nintendo look like a kiddie system when you got this cool horror game for your 16-bit powerhouse. Yeah, well, our brother got the awesome Splatterhouse for Christmas because he was a little bit older. I still got a very cool game, Dragon's Curse, for Tobias at Steam. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, there are some other cool games too, like the amazing pitbull game, Devil's Crush. The very arch impact ninja spirit. And yeah, I actually got signed by Rue. Yeah, from RetroWare TV. And yeah, <laughs> the first time we ever got a Faust game over here was Faust 2 for the CD. Uh, yeah, there's also some bad spots <laughs> with TV sports football. Yeah, I know the Tabrassid team needs some more sports games and everything, but yeah, this one is awful. Great graphics. Excellent, you know, digital voices in it, but the game is slow, clunky, hard to play, not very fun. And then you get Last Word, a good action game, but <laughs> yeah, it has terrible voice samples and everything. Yeah, we also got some different third party support from different companies like Pretty and Software and Tengen here. Yeah, sadly, they didn't have too much support for it to rest it scene, so. Don't look for too many Tengen games for the system. In fact, I think this is the only Tengen game for the Turbo 16. Yeah, we can't forget about the sequel to the game of the year. Yeah, the Legendary Ads 2. Uh, even though I would like to forget sometimes. It's a good game. Good action, good music. Yeah, that was the music in the background from earlier, but... Man, this was a disappointment for me. Well, for one, it has nothing to do with the original, yeah, Legendary Ads game. Yeah, where's that awesome red-headed character with the ads? And who's this weird guy in the blue speedo with a sword? Yeah, whatever. Still a good game, just not what I expected. Yeah, sadly the game didn't perform too well and pretty much ended the franchise right there. Just sad. Yeah, the 1990s also gave us 
the Turbo Express. Yeah, this cool new device actually lets you play your standard card games. These games that you normally play on your TurboGrafx-16, you can now play on the go. The only problem with this thing is, it was $400. Oh, yeah, remember, I'm Canadian here and everything is totally inflated. It's unfair. Uh, oh yeah, I should also talk about this. The European TurboGrafx system. Oh, I'm actually not too sure when this came out. I'm pretty sure it was 1990, but if you look on the copyright info of this, you actually won't see any dates, which is very unheard of. Yeah, normally if you look on a game system, it actually tells you the year, serial numbers, and all that sort of junk. But this, yeah, European TurboGrafx-16 actually doesn't have that. I actually looked in the booklets, I looked on the system itself, the controller, the entire box, no copyright date. Now that's free. Yeah, so I think the reason why there's not a lot of copyright info on the system is because it wasn't released in a lot of markets. So good luck finding it. <laughs> yeah, I say get these systems while you can because they might be a very hot commodity in the future. Just saying. Yeah, despite my minor nitpits here and there, it was still awesome playing the TurboGrafx-16 back then, and it's cool to reminisce about these awesome titles here. You know, not all of them are too good, but, you know, some are the best games I ever played on a 16-bit system ever. Yeah, you get cool little addicted titles that you don't expect to be good, and then you get some weird CD titles that have some killer music and, you know, fancy audio that you haven't heard before. But yeah, some of the dialogue can be kind of cheesy as well. And then you get the action patch Flutterhouse game where you're just killing and mutilating monsters. Oh yeah, so fun. <laughs> okay, and that's it for me. This is Airsoft World Champion. Over and out.